Hello, thank you uh, for joining us. I'm your host, Akali Bakale. My guest today is Mahadi Mohammed from America. We are going to de discuss on the current situation of Ethiopia. Mahadi, welcome. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, how do you see measures taken by federal government on TPLF? The measure that is uh, uh, taken or that is in a process of uh, implementation by the federal government is a measure of establishing rule of law. So uh, if we think about the historical background uh, that led to this situation, we can see that TPLF has missed a lot of opportunity of negotiating, talking to the federal government, as well as you know, talking to the Ethiopian society that were formed you know, to mediate between the government and the regional government of Tigray. So now uh, this TPLF group, they completely misunderstood their political power, as well as their ability to influence you know, situation. They are still thinking in the mentality of a rebel group. So that completely led them to this situation, completely led them to think that they can change or they can force you know, the government and make sure they can attain whatever they want. I can say this a complete misunderstanding of the reality. Currently, the Ethiopian government has the power, has the experience, have tried a lot of you know, uh, means to convince this group. Uh, even within the Tigray uh, community or society, uh, the government has promoted uh, a lot of groups so that they can have you know, different opinion about the political situation. But this group, uh, using the force or using their political might, they, they were trying all this group not to uh, reflect you know, their uh, political intentions, not to practice uh, democratic, uh, I mean, culture, or you can call it democratic process, because they still think that they can do everything using the military power. That situation, that reality is not what we are seeing today. Because you have a government that is learning from different types of conflicts. You have a government that is gaining experience of solving you know, a lot of problems. We have had issues in Oromia. We have had issues in the Southern nations. We have had issues in a lot of regions. But this government has taken time with a lot of patience to solve you know, all those problems. So now the problem of this TPLF uh, I think, as they believe, uh, is going to get solved in a, in a military way because they have chosen that route. But the whole process can be described as uh, a process of establishing rule of law and order and a process of making sure that the federal government has the upper political power as well as the legal uh, the legal capacity to make sure this group is not misusing their uh, their uh, military power or their military their, their military might, even from the political perspective or from the militaristic perspective, this group they have misunderstood the situation of the region. Today, Ethiopia has good friends within all regional powers. Ethiopia can maintain the peace and of this, the peace and security of the region. Ethiopia is not Ethiopia of yesterday. All governments within the region they are supporting the effort the effort of the federal government. So the way I see this whole process, I see it as a process of making sure rule of law and uh, we can say justice is in place than you know um, uh, than you know uh, than irregularities of some uh, misperceived uh, you know uh, abilities abilities by uh, uh, the regional government uh, the, i mean i cannot say the regional government now because they have turned it into a rebel group they have attacked the federal government they have the, attacked you know the whole establishment of you know the the northern region that the federal government used to have so now they are at the level of a rebel group. So uh, I am hoping Ethiopian people and the government will make sure this group 
will uh, will will learn you know it will, and will get a lesson of uh, uh, making sure that law is there despite any 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 military power that any group can have tpl wage war against ethiopian uh, defense force what leads to this situation uh, they have misunderstood you know uh, their all uh, military power you know why is that their experience in the last 27 years and before that as a rebel made them believe that they can achieve uh, any uh, polit political goal or any national goal through the use of force so this group and this team they are a type of like they are not like a type of a politician that you can deal with them using you know uh, the framework of idea rather they always believe in using the military force in destabilizing the region in using you know uh, violence and incitement so this uh, all thinking by this group has you know contributed to the current conflict or to the current situation so the government is trying to make sure that these people this group they can understand the law of language they can understand the language of law they can understand the language of peace they can understand the language of security so it is important to underline that this whole situation or the situation that we are experiencing today is completely inflicted by this group is designed by this group so that the, the the ethiopian people and the ethiopian government suffer you know internally because now we have a lot of issues that you know the societies are requesting there is a question of economy there is a question of you know job by the use so the government wants to solve that but all of a sudden when this situation happened they thought that you know they thought that they can you know uh, diverge government's attention from you know it is main objectives like solving the society's problem into war but i am confident that the government has the ability to work on development as well as to make sure that rule of law is going to be established within tigray region of course there is a lot of uh, negotiations and you know uh, there are there are a lot of processes between egypt sudan and ethiopia to make sure you know they have an agreement uh, within this year or in, in the days or in the months to come but this team if they have uh, an intention of uh, like uh, exposing uh, ethiopia's government uh, uh, ability to you know to the forces of uh, potential enemies is completely like <laughs> misunderstanding the whole situation uh, you know why i keep saying misunderstanding this whole, the whole situation Ethiopia of today is not Ethiopia, Ethiopia of the past. Ethiopia has managed a lot of problems internally, as well as solved those problems in a way a lot of regional powers get surprised. For example, our relationship with Somalia wa was one of you know, the difficult ones historically. And you know, there was also suspicion within some regional governments because of Ethiopia's government stance in the past 27 years. But today, all governments, including government of Sudan, they are supporting the effort of, you know, the federal government to make sure uh, rule of law are in place. For example, Sudan today, they are supporting the effort of the federal government when we have, you know, this, you know, uh, internal crisis. So the Tigrayan, I mean, the TPLF group, they have, uh, they have uh, misunderstood this whole development within the region. If their purpose was to make sure Ethiopia's uh, ability, diplomatic-wise, get exposed, they, they didn't achieve that because the Ethiopian government is getting stronger and stronger every day. It has the support of the regional powers. It has the support of the international community. So now what we are seeing is this group, they turn it from regional government to the level of a rebel group. So the way the rebel group are going to be treated will be the same way other countries are treating rebel groups. So the Ethiopian government and the federal government has an advantage. It is not going to be like an issue of Egypt when you see to this conflict, because Egypt has its own problem internally. 
So they have to focus on that. This, can, this situation cannot be taken as a bargain by the Egyptian government to unsettle Ethiopia because Ethiopia has a power to defend that. Ethiopia has a power to defend its sovereignty. Ethiopia has a power to play, you know, as a diplomatic and, you know, as a military, uh, uh, as a military uh, power within the region. So if they thought that they can expose the Ethiopian government uh, in this situation, especially if the if TPLF thought that way, this is a complete miscalculation of the reality. Diplomacy is the only solution for uh, yeah, for Egypt, uh, diplomacy, diplomacy is the, the only solution because Egypt is not in yesterday's place as well. Egypt cannot even move the Arab politics today. The Arab politics is in the hand of, you know, United Arab Emirates and some, you know, few s small countries. So the only option for Egypt is negotiation and, you know, making sure uh, all uh, issues are solved in a, in a diplomatic way. How come the government differentiate this group of course this group is are hiding themselves within the people it's a good question the first step has to be taken by uh, tigrayan society to make sure they differentiate themselves you know from this rebel group because this rebel group is uh, playing a game at the expense of tigrayan's people so the tigrayan community the tigrayan society in the country or outside of the country, they have to make sure that this group is not going to attain any objective, objective of any uh, development objective, political objective of, or economic objective of the Tigrayan people. Because this group has emerged as a rebel. It has money. It has all the resources that the Tigrayan people doesn't have today. So the Tigrayan people, the Tigrayan community, have to think twice when it comes to their relationship with, with TPLF. So they have to alienate TPLF from the society, from themselves in the first place, okay? That is the first step. The second step is the government has to make sure that not, all, not every war can be weighed in a conventional manner. The, the TPLF, they want a conventional war. The, the federal government has to understand that there is no way it is going to play a conventional war with this group. They have to use different militaristic strategies to make sure they can host, you know, this uh, illegal and mentally ill group from, uh, you know, the, 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 the Tigray region and make sure they can alienate uh, this group from uh, the society, the, the Tigrayan society. So uh, there is a two uh, thing, there are two things that, that has to be done. The first is, the Tigrayan community, the Tigrayan society, they have to make sure they can alienate themselves from this group. At the, same, uh, the second one is the government have to make sure that this war is not going to be a conventional war. And they, the government has to use you know, a different strategy to take out this ill group from the society. So the other uh, important piece is also is about time. The more the government waits you know, uh, to make sure you know, it is not... Uh, causing you know civilian casualties or something like that this group they take that as an advantage so the government has to show that it has you know uh, an upper hand military strategy wise what has to be done in terms of uh, diplomacy to let no international community the situation I think diplomacy wise, what the government has been doing is fantastic because they have to let the international community, the, the international development agencies uh, about the issues that are going in uh, the northern part of the country. Okay, having said that, if we give a lot of emphasis to the international, uh, I, I mean, to the international diplomacy as a result of this conflict, I think that is a wrong strategy. This group is a rebel group. They are not a country. They are not a government that we are going to deal with them, you know, diplomatic wise, or that we are going to promote, you know, diplomatic solution uh, as if this group is like part of the international, uh, I mean, the international uh, uh, <laughs> part of, uh, as if it is like the part of an international body or something like that. This is a regional group. We have 
so many regions within the country. All regions nowadays, they are respecting rule of law. So we have to make sure that the TPLF has that attitude and that intention when it comes to like uh, respecting the rule of law. So I don't think there is going to be a lot of work from Ethiopian government to uh, convince you know, the international community because this is not an international crisis. This is an, interna uh, this is an internal problem. So uh, the way the government needs to solve this uh, problem uh, has to get into consideration and the international community have to understand this is an Ethiopian problem that needs an Ethiopian solution. How do you see the result of American election? The American election, uh, first and foremost, has an impact locally because America's politics is local rather than international. But when it comes to uh, from the international relations perspective, of course, uh, the Democratic uh, uh, I mean, Party won the election and we don't know what kind of uh, policy they are going to have in the Horn of African region. So we will learn that in the coming days. But the Ethiopian government has to make sure that uh, they have all you know, the means to know uh, who is going to be you know, the second secretary of the state for the United States as well as who are going to be uh, included within, you know, as an advisory group uh, uh, at the Secretary of the State of the uh, United States. Knowing that will help them a lot, you know, to design their policy when it comes to United States. But again, America always have been a champion of time rather than principle, which means all their diplomatic relationship is dependent on the time and the change in any region of the world. So Ethiopia has to make sure that it is a strong country, it is a reliable ally to make sure it can keep you know, its interest as well as the international uh, powerful uh, group's interest. So uh, the, uh, the work has to be done internally uh, rather than you know, international wise. A strong Ethiopia, can uh, maintain a, a great relationship with United States or with any other power, but a weak Ethiopia cannot maintain that. So the Ethiopian government has to focus internally and have to make sure that its relationship with the diaspora is also uh, in a better uh, form. You know why I mentioned the relationship with the diaspora? Diaspora nowadays all over the world, whether you are Nigerian or uh, uh, Kenyan or whatever, uh, if you are living in United States and you are a citizen of United States, you can impact, you know, the local politics. So uh, Ethiopians nowadays, especially in Washington DC area, in Minnesota, in Seattle, in, uh, I mean, California, they, uh, they have a lot of numbers and they have, they, there is like a considerable, a considerable like community within this, you know, states of America. So working with this uh, Ethiopian community, community uh, in different states will help you know, the government uh, at least to influence you know, uh, the, the local po politics uh, and make sure you know, uh, it is relationship with the United States gets better using you know, uh, it as Ethiopian born citizens. Majority of Ethiopians campaign for Joe Biden to be a, just a one this election and they are hungered by the comments of Donald Trump on guerre. How do you see this? They are happy in Riga. I mean, uh, uh, the, the speech by Donald Trump has uh, uh, a public relation, had a, per a public relation impact, you know, on uh, Ethiopian community because the Ethiopian community have uh, uh, a strong opinion when it comes to like, uh, uh, Renaissance Dam and Ethiopia's development activities because now a lot of people they are learning that if the situation gets better in uh, their home country uh, they have also you know uh, a plan to do business they have also a plan to do a lot of stuff so uh, the speech by Donald Trump of course has really? has uh, instigated the sense of like uh, 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 opposing, uh, I mean, uh, his party and uh, opposing him as a president as well. So campaigning against him was the result of the speech. 
So we never, I mean, personally, if you ask me, I don't even know uh, before that speech if many Ethiopians were uh, electing Trump or were voting for Trump. So uh, that speech has changed, you know, the uh, opinion of the Ethiopian community in the United States. And, you know, they organized and they made sure that, you know, Biden wins, uh, especially in, uh, uh, in a region or in a state they, uh, they have, you know, a considerable number. But all in all, the success of the Ethiopian community, especially in the, in the, in the diaspora, will be making sure that Mr. Biden has, you know, uh, can form, you know, his team uh, from uh, personalities that uh, have a good understanding about Ethiopia and personalities who uh, know the, Ethiop the Ethiopian politics, as well as uh, uh, Ethiopia society, uh, I mean, the Ethiopian society. Uh, this uh, will help uh, form, you know, the foreign policy and can impact, you know, positively because policies are done by individuals or by people of uh, any time. Uh, as I said earlier, uh, American foreign policy depends on the time. So whoever comes at this time will have an impact. So if the Ethiopian community or the, the Ethiopian diaspora makes sure that Mr. Biden or President-elect Biden can have, you know, uh, good people who can, uh, who have, you know, good intention about Ethiopia within his team, then uh, that makes a lot of difference. Thank you. Okay, you're welcome, Akalus.